Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Dave the Wombat, here with, turn this down here for a second. I am here with my Jackson, Randy Rhodes model. This is one of the lower end entry models, but I love it. I've always wanted a Jackson. Randy Rhodes is my favorite player. And I was looking at one a while back that was all black. It looked cool, but I really like the white, the what they call the zebra style pickups. The black body with the white binding. I kind of like the white one too, but this one just, I like this so much better. Um, it's got 24 jumbo frets. It's got the shark tooth inlay that Jackson is known for. Six inline tuners. A maple neck that's nicely bound. Um, it's just nice. It's got the string through. Goes through the body for extra sustain. Got this nice tunematic bridge. Got a master volume, master tone, two-way selector. And your jack goes into the upper belt along with your strap. I got strap locks on this thing because I didn't want it to come crashing down. Beautiful fast maple neck. It is a compound radius. I believe it starts off at like a 12 and then it ends up at like a 16. So it's kind of, maybe it's a 10 at the top. What that means is it's the curve of the fingerboard. When it has, the more radius it has, it's easier for playing chords. The flatter it is, it's easier for doing single note and solo stuff. And a while back, I want to say probably mid 80s, late 80s, 90s, um, they decided to do what's known as a compound radius, where they have these blocks and they'll sand the neck before they put the frets in. And they'll start off with whatever they want it to be in your, your area between the nut and your fifth fret. For, for doing most of your chord work. Some guys play chords down here too, but most of your chord work's done up in here, and everything else up here is mostly single note stuff. Again, you can play chords different spots of the neck, but what they did is they made it easier for you to fret the chords with the one radius, and then it gen it's round like this, and then it kind of gradually flattens out. It's not entirely flat, but you can tell it is flatter, and it makes it a lot easier to play just all the way around. Again, like I said, I always wanted a Jackson. I finally got one after many, many years. This is actually an early Father's Day present from uh, Jen and Nick. And this is it's nice. And to go for more of the Randy Rhodes vibe, I, I'm not even going to try to attempt anything because he was so much better than I am. I'm playing through my Orange Crush Pro uh, 120 watt head into a, um, I forget the logo's gonna bought that second hand, my cabinet. Um, I know it has Celestians in it. I can't remember which ones they are. I know Randy took the Celestians out of his Marshalls he primarily used um, Marshalls, um, and he put, uh, I've heard different stories. He, he either used Altec, sometimes he used JBL, and he had a bunch of, he had quite a few different pedals. Um, I was, I've got a bunch of different pedals just because it helps me sound better. I decided to bust out my Distortion Plus because that's what he's known for using. And it's a cool little pedal. I like how it sounds. I like I like a lot of different sounds, and it depends on what I'm playing. Sometimes I'll throw a fuzz when I'm trying to do some Jimmy stuff. Sometimes I'll use like a Boss um, Overdrive, or sometimes a, um, their DS1, the orange pedal. I love that pedal. The MXR gets a little bit closer to Randy's tone, so I decided I would bust that out. And um, yeah, like I said, this is an awesome guitar. Um, the body, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
The body, I believe, is um, some type of basswood. It's really light, but it's really resonant. The notes really ring out. The neck is maple, and the binding is just this. This guitar is gorgeous. I mean, if let me get closer here, but you see the binding, that white on the neck right there, goes all the way up around the peg head even. I mean, this is not an overly expensive guitar. This is like a two fifty, three hundred dollar guitar, but they spare they. They just, they do a nice job. They do a really nice job. Jackson. Look at those shark tooth inlays. Isn't that cool? He says, you're rocking. The only thing I don't like about V's is when you're sitting down, you kind of have to have them off to the side. They're not really a comfortable guitar to, to try to hold. Sometimes you have to have it straddle you a bit. But anyways, my clean sound. And with the Distortion Plus on. punch it's not overly fuzzy but it's not squeaky clean so it has just has that right amount of distortion See, it's not, again, like I said, it's not all overly distorted. Gives it that still that vintage 80s sound. It's cool, man. Very cool. They just did a really nice job with this guitar. Like, I can't, I can't get over how nice all the stuff is on it. Where they put the straps. It helps it balance. Um, let me get over here so you can see it better. Let's see, even the plate right there it says Jackson on it. The neck, it's like super, super smooth. Jackson licensed tuners all straight in a row. nice I mean, it's, this is like their signature neck a lot of people have copied this design they've come close but this this is the Jackson neck and you can see more of that binding I was talking about they just did a lovely job with this guitar and then like the striping see the binding on the neck and on the body I mean And the neck pocket, usually on a lot of guitars, the necks don't seat in the pocket too well. Look at how tight that is. Usually you can put like a, a, um, a business card or something between it. Sometimes I've seen it where you can put a credit card or even a pick. And see that neck joint is really tight. A lot of people say bolt-on necks are less desirable than set necks. But when you see a pocket that tight, it's going to give you... Pretty close to the same sound of a set neck. 
and just like the just right there goes up into the neck and it's just so so nice they, they didn't leave anything to chance they just they just did a really nice job man and Randy helped design this guitar before he died. He's known for playing his um, Sandoval polka dotted flying V with like a harpoon looking headstock. Then he's also known for playing the Les Paul. I've got an Epiphone Les Paul. Mine has P90s. His had like the PAF, the silver humbuckers. These are more of a single coil. But let's see here. You can kind of see right here, even though it's still black, you can kind of see there, there's a bit of a gap between the neck and the body right there. It's it's still a good guitar. I bought this one secondhand. I don't remember what I paid for it now. I think I said before in another video, it's escaping me right now, but it was, was very, very inexpensive. Turn this down. This orange amp, I love this orange amp. You can do so much with it, get so many sounds out of it. It's just, it's so nice, so versatile. Man, I'm so far out of tune, excuse me here. Yeah, this guitar sounds really nice. Haha, <laughs> it didn't drop either. Distortion Plus, it's a nice pedal. Got some other pedals that are a little bit more aggressive distortion wise. Yeah, but this is this is good just for playing like rhythm with people and stuff. I like the Rhodes one a lot better. You know, I'm not trying to be a snob, but it just it's more it's more special. Randy was the reason I started to play to begin with. And then I got into Jimmy and Stevie Ray Vaughan and some of the other ones. And I got more towards Bluesy stuff rather than the shreddy metal. But Randy Rhodes is always always tops. Am I down? There we go. I was down. Volume was down. <laughs> I'm 
so sloppy. <laughs> guitar when you try to play something it doesn't sound quite right sometimes you have to have the right guitar to get the right sounds that you're looking for it's kind of like if you do any painting you can use like a real fine brush or a real wide brush you're gonna get different results if you, if you use a fine brush and you want to cover a whole bunch of uh, whatever the medium you're using or whatever the surface you're using to paint it's going to take you a long time. If you use a wide brush, it'll take you a lot quicker, but the results will be completely different. Again, if you want to do fine detailed work, a wide brush isn't going to cut it. So, like I was saying, some of the other stuff I was, I was messing around sounded better when I tried to mess around like Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> Just can't do it. You just can't do it, man. 
but you can. Crank up the volume. <laughs> watching this. I will see you guys later. Adios muchachos! And hang that guy on the stand. Make sure you don't fall!